Today's story is one of the most horrifying ones out there. Today's story is about three girls that were kidnapped and locked inside a room for an entire decade. Their captor abused them mentally and physically, while no one suspected him. At night, he would beat and rape the girls. During the day, he would play in a local band and be a great member of his community. His name is Ariel Castro and it's the story of three girls who were kidnapped and held captive for over 10 years. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Let's begin. Ariel Castro was born in Puerto Rico and was a well-known member of his community in Tremont, Cleveland. He worked as a bus driver, played in a band, and attended church. Castro's friends described him as compassionate, well-mannered, and a charismatic man. However, his personal life is where his true colors oozed out. He had three daughters and a son with his wife, Gramilda Figueroa, whom he abused for nearly two decades. Castro used to beat his wife, breaking her ribs, arms, and causing traumatic brain injuries. One time, he even pushed her down the stairs and cracked her skull. As a result of the injuries, a blood clot formed in Gramilda's brain, causing a tumor, which in 2012, took her life. Despite the domestic violence, Ariel Castro never got in serious trouble with the authorities. The charges were always dropped, and he didn't serve a single day behind the prison bars. After his wife left him and won custody of their children, he used to violate the custody order and take them home. For whatever reason, he still went unpunished. Six years after Grimilda left Castro, he began his vicious acts of kidnapping. On August 22, 2002, Ariel Castro kidnapped 21-year-old Michelle Knight. Michelle already had a rough life. Just a year prior to the kidnapping, she was raped and bore a child, who was given away to foster care. Her family members reported that Michelle was easily gullible and sometimes would get confused about her surroundings. Her vulnerabilities made her an easy target for Castro, who was looking for exactly that. He was targeting vulnerable girls going through a crisis. After Michelle was kidnapped, her family reported her missing, but they assumed that she just ran away. Eight months later, on April 21st, 2003, Castro acted again. This time he chose 16-year-old Amanda Berry as his target. She had just finished her shift at the Burger King and was walking home when Castro asked her if she needs a ride. He lied to her that his son is also working at Burger King, and Amanda believed him. Taking a ride with your co-worker's father doesn't seem dangerous, but this time it was. Instead of getting home on the eve of her birthday, Amanda got locked inside Castro's house. Ariel Castro kidnapped his final victim a year later, on April 2, 2004. This time, he targeted 14-year-old Gina de Jesus, who was a friend of his daughter. That's right, he used the friendship of his daughter to kidnap yet another girl. But it's just the beginning of this horrifying story that lasted for a decade. The police connected all three kidnappings, and the entire community of Tremont had changed. Everyone lived in fear that one day their child wouldn't come home. Yet. No one knew that the monster who kidnapped three girls was living in their community. No one even suspected that their neighbor, Ariel Castro, is a diabolical criminal. While the people of Tremont were living in uncertainty and sorrow, the three girls, Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Georgina de Jesus, were experiencing the nightmare. Ariel Castro kept them in his basement, raped and abused them every day for a decade, he only gave them one meal a day, but if the girls misbehaved, he would starve them. Eventually, Castro got confident enough to bring the girls from the basement upstairs, but the living conditions were still terrible. He only allowed them to shower twice a week, and instead of a restroom, the girls had to use a bucket, which would go unemptied for days. Castro wanted to have absolute control over the girls. He would keep the doors of their room unlocked, but as soon as the girls opened them and peeked outside, he would come and brutally beat them up. That was his way to condition the girls to never even think about escaping. 
he always threatened to kill them if they caused any problems. Ariel Castro got so confident that he even began having people over at his house. The guests would play music and cook food without even suspecting that there are three abused girls held captive a floor above. Over the years, both Michelle and Amanda got pregnant. However, Castro only allowed Amanda to keep the baby. She bore a daughter named Jocelyn. On the other hand, Castro terminated Michelle's pregnancy by starving her for weeks on end and beating her up until she miscarried. What's utterly horrifying is that during the decade of captivity, Michelle got pregnant five times, always meeting the same fate. Castro was more lenient with his daughter Jocelyn. He even allowed her to play outside, and his neighbors described him as a great, loving father to his youngest daughter. On May 6, 2013, Ariel Castro went to visit his mother and told Jocelyn about it. The daughter informed her mother, Amanda Berry, that Castro is going to do so. Amanda's mind flooded with the thoughts of escaping. After Castro left the house, Amanda ran to the house doors, but they were locked. She began banging on it and screaming for help. Charles Ramsey, who was a resident of the neighborhood, heard her call for help, and without any hesitation ran to the doors and kicked them out. The man brought Amanda and her child to his house, where they contacted the police. Although she escaped, Amanda was still in a panic. Castro would come back home at any moment, see that she is gone, and murder the other two women that were still inside the house. Upon arrival, the police officers instantly understood the situation and ran to Castro's house. They went upstairs and met the girls, Georgina de Jesus and Michelle Knight. The officers informed the police department about the miracle, and Ariel Castro was soon found and arrested. He was sentenced to 1,000 years in prison and pleaded guilty to 937 counts. However, just after serving a single month behind the bars, he killed himself in his prison cell. The house where the three girls experienced the decade-long nightmare was demolished on August 7, 2013. To this day, the house is blurred on Google Maps. Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Georgina de Jesus lived through hell. While this story is absolutely abhorrent and shows how evil humans can be, it can also be inspiring. It shows how strong the power of a will is, making it possible to survive day in, day out through the horrendous abuse. This story also gives hope that many missing people are still alive, and one day they will come back to their families. Thanks for watching. That was it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Trust me, there are many more fascinating videos coming your way. You don't want to miss any. Have a nice one. See you next time.